Hello, it's Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video, we are going to provide picks and analysis for the 2020 Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes at Churchill Downs, a race that is on the road to the Kentucky Derby. Before we get going, though, if you want to learn how to make money betting on horses and learn how to bet on horses, I appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can get all the latest tips, tools, and resources to help you make money betting on thoroughbred horse racing. All right, so here we go. On Saturday, November 28th, race 11, going a mile in the 16th the Churchill Downs, we have the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes. A race, like I said, it's on the road to the Kentucky Derby. So horses in this race have a chance to earn enough points to help their cause to be in the starting gate at the Kentucky Derby. Very interesting race here. Of course, we got lightly raced horses. Any of these horses can approve this stage in their career, the, their, in their lives, being this young, these two-year-olds. Any one of them can dr dramatically improve. So it's very tough to handicap these kind of races, in my opinion. But there's opportunities to make some money, too. You have a few horses coming in from the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Race. Uh, that had just occurred at Keeneland in early November. And you have a few horses that just broke their maiden, which means they just won for the very first time. And now they're coming into this race. So a lot of angles to, to look at, to evaluate. And it's, it's going to be tough. But hopefully we can find a, a price and some contenders to help us out and help us win some money. So let's take each horse one by one. At the very end, I'll give you my picks for this year's Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes. All right, so number one, sitting on goal. Sitting on goal, I was, I was disappointed with in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. I thought this horse had a chance. I thought there'd be plenty of pace to run at in that race uh, for sitting on goal. Just didn't seem like he could get it going. It's a closer, so it needs the pace to run at. It's five to one morning line. Uh, will it get the pace in here? I don't see his... To me, I don't see as much pace as it was in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, so I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think this might uh, be tough for me to consider this horse in this race, and I'd feel foolish because I, you know, I backed the horse last time, but maybe not this time. Uh, Del Romans trains this horse. Also has the one A horse, the other entry here. And that is a horse called Smiley Sab Sabaka, something like that. I apologize if I screw up that name, but it's not the first time or the last that I'll screw a horse's name up. But it's the number one A horse. That's all that matters to me. Uh, again, Del Roman trains this horse. It's moving up in class, five to one. Hey, it might have a shot. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to look elsewhere. Number two, Swill. Now, this is interesting. As far as pace goes, I don't think there's going to be much early pace in this race. There's basically a couple horses, maybe three, that might, on paper, you never know what the jockeys are going to do once they leave the starting gate, but on paper, just a, a couple or a few that are going to try to get out there on the front end. And both of them, the main early speed horses, are trained by Brad Cox. So that makes it interesting. You have the same trainer... With two early speed horses, well, it didn't make sense for those two to battle each other and wear each other out, getting the speed to it. It could happen. They're horses. You never know what they're going to do. But the the number two, Swill, is an early speed horse, six to one morning line, trained by Brad Cox. This is one of those horses that just broke its maiden at Churchill Downs. Now it's stepping up in class. But I think the early speed is advantageous for this horse. So, uh Really look at number two, Swill. Number three, Arabian Prince, a closer, eight to one. Morning lines, one for two at Churchill Downs. Hey, this could improve, and it, it, it could be there. It's just all about, does it have enough pace to, to close in on? Now, it's very interesting that how the track is playing at Churchill. So maybe it is favoring horses off the pace so if if so then one of these off the pace horses have the advantage but typically i go with early speed horses um 
when in doubt, I go with early speed horses, especially if there's not much early speed, I give the edge to early speed horses. Uh, you kind of saw that at Keeneland with Authentic and numerous other horses on Breeders' Cup weekend. Uh, number four, here's our heavy favorite, six to five morning line. I was kind of surprised at this. Keep me in mind, and this is probably why, it came in third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Stakes at Keeneland. So I guess everybody or the, the uh, track handicapper, the person who makes the morning line, might that might be the logic behind this. It ran a huge, I shouldn't say huge, but as far as this field goes, the highest speed figure number. So that might factor in to this uh, six to five morning line. But it's trained by Roberto Diodoro. I don't know if this horse is legit at these odds. I wouldn't take a short price on this horse. It's a closer. It needs some pace to close in on unless it's that really good of a horse that it could close in on. But I'm going to try to beat this horse at 6-5 to five morning line. I don't, I don't uh, see that being that low of a price, honestly. If it beats me, fine, but my, I'm not out that much money at that price. Then we get to, so that was number four, keep me in mind. Number five, Inspector Frost. This is the other early speed horse trained by Brad Cox. Eight to one morning line. Its speed figures hadn't been that impressive yet, but it could take another jump up from uh, its last race. And I, hey, I don't know. I think this horse is worth taking a shot on at eight to one, Inspector Frost just in case the speed gets out there, just in case the hot hand of Brad Cox keeps going uh, and winning with their horses. It's ridden by John Velasquez. I know this horse probably isn't authentic. Well, we don't know yet. Could be like an authentic, we don't know. <laughs> That's a stretch. I'll probably get all kinds of comments for even hinting at that. But what, I'm, what I was trying to get at is John Velasquez was riding authentic did a really good job on the front end in the Kentucky Derby and the Breeders' Cup Classic. So I would be confident with John Velasquez on the front end with my horse that is an early speed horse. That's basically what I was trying to get at, what I was saying. Uh, but this horse, talent-wise, we don't know. But at 8-1, to one, I think it's, it's a nice gamble. Just what if, what if? Horses like this get out on the front end and they're they're coming into their own. They keep progressing. That's kind of what what I'm thinking at that price. Number six, oncoming train 10 to 1 morning line. Uh, it's probably going to be sitting off the pace. It's going to be tough for this horse, I think, to overtake some of these other uh, horses in here. Number seven, King Fury, named after the boxing champion, heavyweight champion, Tyson Fury. Seventh in the Breeders' Cup Juveniles, 2-0 and at Churchill Downs. So if you're big on the horse for course angle, there you go. This is a legit horse, a legit contender with a history of running its best races at Churchill Downs, trained by Kenny McPeak. And I definitely think this is a contender here. Number eight, our last, is a field of eight, so this is our last horse, Ultimate Badger. Has to improve, definitely, to beat these other horses in this race. It's 15 to 1 morning line is ultimate badger. All right, here we go. Who am I going to bet in the Breeders' or Breeders Cup? I still got Breeders' Cup on my mind. In the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes at Churchill Downs, November 28th, race number 11. Going off around... Almost 6 o'clock under the lights. 5.58, I think, is like the post time. Somewhere around there. 5.56. But who's counting? Who am I going to bet? I think this, <laughs> this race is wide open. Just like it is a lot with these young horses, these uh, two-year-olds that are still developing, still coming into their own. So here's what you got to consider, in my opinion. Do you go with horses that are in well-known big-time races that have been racing these at this class level that have you know at least competed at that class level but some haven't like in the breeders cup juvenile you know you got sitting on goal finished ninth uh keep me in mind did finish third and, and again that's probably why it's 
the heavy favorite here. And then, then the uh, uh, Fury horse, King Fury, came in seventh. So just because it was in those big time races, does that mean it's better than these other horses that haven't been in those big time races? Or do you give credence just because they were in that field, even though they finished, you know, and in the case of a couple of these horses, seventh and ninth. Uh, so that's kind of what you got to factor in. It's all about the price. We say this all the time. It's about what kind of odds you're getting. I'm going to take a shot, a chance at hopefully these early speed horses trained by a trainer that's doing really well this year lately and probably looked by all looks of it is going to have a keep this this win or not win streak but this really good career going that is brad cox and he has two horses the two early speed horses which is uh inspector frost and swill so basically the uh five horse and the two horse will the speed hold up at churchill is that how the track's playing i don't know but i I'm going to take a shot with number five, Inspector Frost, number two, Swill, and number seven, King Fury would be my top picks. But my main pick, not that confident on it, but eight to one, might as well, is number five, Inspector Frost. But we'll look at the odds when post time rolls around and see how this whole thing shakes out. I might even box those three. Uh, and hopefully get keep me in mind out of it and blow up some nice exactas. So, uh, so we'll see. We'll see. But my top picks for the 2020 Kentucky Jockey Club stakes would be number five, Inspector Frost, number two, Swill, and number seven, King Fury. Now, who do you like? I'd love to hear who you think is going to win the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes, a race that is on the road to the 2021 Kentucky Derby. Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below if you're going to bet this race. Who do you like? And if you like this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you hadn't already. If you want to learn how to bet on horses and get all the latest tips, tools, and resources from WeekendHandicapper.com. I hope everybody has a wonderful, safe, healthy Thanksgiving weekend, and I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, you get to spend some nice, quality downtime with yourself, your friends, your family, and until next time, happy handicapping, smart wagering.